hey, not every horror story is the end of the world. Sometimes you don't run a great session and you need feedback. This, um, well, you'll see. It's important to get constructive feedback. Hey, I'm sorry you didn't like how the session went. I totally understand why you're not interested in continuing, dude. Is there anything specific I could improve from your point of view? Thanks, Yellow Redacted. A few moments later. Oh. Try to be less sh at DM. Oh. That emoji really just settles that this person must be the most punchable human being in existence. I totally understand if you don't want to write out a whole essay to explain to your DM what you didn't like about their style, but at the same time, you could put a little bit more effort into not being the worst, you know? This is a bit of an interesting one. Around three years ago, I'd been wanting to get into Dungeons and Dragons. I always thought it seemed super fun, but I never saw my friends talking about it. However, I had mentioned I wanted to play around my girlfriend at the time, and she mentioned she was going to be DMing for the first time and she would love to have me as a player. For the sake of this, I'll be calling everyone in this group by their respective classes. Myself as a Goliath Ranger, Elf Warlock, Human Paladin, Tabaxi Rogue, aka Knife Cat, and Herringon Bard. To start, we were set to fail because this was no ordinary adventuring campaign. This was Curse of Strahd. Nowadays, I try to lean away from super dark campaigns because I simply tend not to like them. No shade to people who do prefer spookier campaigns though. But this is my first time playing the game, so I didn't really think much of it. The main problem truly arose when I realized only me and the Paladin made serious characters. Everyone else made joke characters in Curse of Strahd. The Warlock was just a Dungeons and Dragons version of Yugi from Yu-Gi-Oh! The Rogue was a two foot tall murder hobo and refused to have their characters be common. Instead, they just uttered pure gibberish when in character. And the Bard? Well, they were the only one who could understand that gibberish. I wouldn't even have a problem with that, but the Bard was the Rogue's girlfriend in real life, and she truly did not care about this game. She spent whole encounters on her phone, having to ask other people what happened and what she was supposed to do. Oh, our poor Dungeon Master. Over the course of the campaign, myself and Paladin seemed to be the only ones trying to progress the campaign to find Strahd, while the other three tried their best to screw up every single encounter as badly as possible. We had nicknamed ourselves the Strahd Flippers, and boy, was that an earned nickname. It didn't help that the only ones who got into the roleplay were the Dungeon Master and the Paladin, unless you include the rogue's unintelligible screeching. Even I, I was a problem with this too, because I had tried to get into character several times for dialogue, but just got really embarrassed. It was my first time playing ever, so I felt dumb when I tried to talk in my character's voice. It didn't help I was 17 and I had a feminine voice for my big hulking Goliath boy. This campaign has no dramatic fallout, no huge blow up or players getting kicked. It all ended with a fizzle. I felt annoyed because whenever I played, I felt like my role-playing actions were consistently overshadowed by the rogue's insistence on being silly. I left after we finished our third session ever, asking the DM to fright my character some sort of mysterious death. Apparently, they only ever did one more session after that, and it all just... It all just ended. At least I can take solace in that I'm friends with them, all except for the bard, who ended up being a total jerk after he broke up with Rogue. Long live our knife cat. I made a video a while back on Curse of Strahd and why there are so many Curse of Strahd horror stories. It's an oldie, but I think it's a goodie, and I'm thinking of doing a remaster for October, by the way. But look, the point is that yeah, there are a lot of Curse of Strahd horror stories, mine included, and I think this is one reason Curse of Strahd is not the most casual story. Now, is it the most grimdark of the grimdarks? No, I don't think it is. But at the same time, melding that into a very silly campaign is going to be really, really hard. Is it possible? Yeah, Chris Perkins did it with the Waffle Crew way back in Dice Camera Action, like circa 2015. But Chris Perkins is also a really great dungeon master, so it's possible, but it's also not easy. I totally understand why this fizzled out. In the end, it's just a lack of compatibility, and sometimes that just happens. Glad you're still friends and hey, who knows, maybe you can find a different game to play. Danger. 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 
So I've been playing with the same group for the past 15 years. We have had some steadfast players, myself plus two other player characters and the Dungeon Master. But those last two spots have rotated between various people throughout the years. This story in particular is about one woman, let's call her Daphne. She joined our group as a rogue. She said her character was skittish, which equated to her character always hiding in the shadows and basically taking off from the party. Obviously, some of this is in roleplay, and it's fine, but I mean she was always leaving the group, and then we'd be shorthanded in a fight. In addition to Dungeons & Dragons, we'd get together and play Spellfire, which is kind of like Magic the Gathering. Daphne would always be super combative and make social situations awkward for everyone. After a few months, maybe even half a year of playing together and her behavior becoming a detriment to the group and overall enjoyment, we let her know that we wanted to stop playing with her and that it just was not working out, which she accepted. Fast forward a month or so, all of us receive an email from some woman named Fiona who says she's Daphne's best friend. Fiona has written us to inform us that Daphne has- Oh my- I- I blame team television for this. Anyway, yeah, she did that, allegedly, because we didn't want to play her anymore. We drove her to it, and now we have to live with this guilt. Needless to say, all of us were very shaken up by this. We all felt horrible, shocked, and disbelief. This hung over us for a couple months and almost ended the game completely, but my dungeon master was also a bar manager at the time. We receive a text from him one random afternoon, which was to inform us that Daphne had just walked into his bar. Clearly, she was alive and well, so our dungeon master confronted her, and she admitted to writing the email herself. It was unbelievable, all that time feeling guilty, and she just staged her own death because we did not want to play with her anymore. This was eight or nine years ago now, but we still remember it. Anyone got a story to share to top that? I mean... We have, you know, a few hundred, but yeah, this is up there with some of the worst. Okay, look, not only did this person fake her death, which is just ridiculous, and not the first time we've seen that, by the way, but this person took it one step further by blaming you for the death and using it to guilt trip you guys. That's just, I mean, that is horribly manipulative behavior, legitimately concerning. Look, I don't want to get all sappy this early into the video, but you're not responsible for anyone's mental health but your own, and somebody who tries to force you to be responsible, that is not okay behavior. You can direct them to a therapist, but you are probably not going to be their therapist. And frankly, you probably shouldn't be. Especially in a freaking board game group. The protagonist is a rogue. Just a rogue, because he played one in multiple campaigns. I'll start with little things that could have been hand-waved if they'd occurred on their own. Rogue always asks for kind of overpowered homebrew races and abilities, while everyone else was strictly using official materials. One dungeon master gave up because Rogue was his close friend. That will be important later. So he had some cool innate spell casting on top of climb speed as well as general speed boost and other things I just can't recall. He described his character as chaotic good, but would sometimes just kill an important NPC or be quite cruel right out of the blue. He would always bring up ye old, that's what my character would do. He also stated he had his own view on alignment and that we couldn't understand it and we could not argue with him either. Occasionally, he would also take great offense in someone not endorsing his tastes and views on life, mainly the fact that none of us were, um, furries like him. Where this one time he said that I wasn't hit enough as a- oh my god. And sometimes physical harm is the only way to make children behave? Yikes. Rogue played the same character all the time, by the way. Not just the same class or race, it was basically the same character roleplay-wise, albeit with a different name. He also took pride in not reading the player's handbook and bragged about it several times, how it didn't prevent him from being the best player. So, where do I even start? I was invited to a Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition game by a friend. It had a rocky start, but eventually we had a stable group, which the rogue was a part of. His character was a middle-aged man turned into a furry little girl. <laughs> I'm leaving that in. Uh, he was turned into a furry little girl by a mage as an experiment, though we did not know the details at the time. 
He would often jump from her being really naive and innocent to knowing adult stuff, which was jarring. His character annoyed me because she felt really out of touch with the tone of the campaign, but I learned to just take it easy. We all had our goofs. He seemed to be under the impression that team play was overrated, and the goal is to win the game by himself. So he often ran off alone, speak for the entire party without communicating with us, being bored for diplomacy instead of fighting, and fights themselves were being too easy for him. As we all know, slashing things with daggers is the main point of the game, right? He had a few small arguments here and there with other players, but mostly with me. I can be quite short-tempered, and so can he. Sometimes one other player would complain about Rogue's behavior to me because they thought that the DM wouldn't help them. You know, he's the Rogue's best friend after all, and the concerns were correct. If the DM talking to the Rogue ever did prevent conflict, the effect would not last for long. And for some reason, inexperience and lack of other friends to play with I guess, all of us held on to this game. We argued frequently, we hated each other at times, but overall, I gotta say, I still enjoyed the game. We even had some pleasant roleplay moments with the Rogue. That's also why leaving seemingly wasn't on the table. We always thought that the troubled times were behind us at this point. On top of that, the player bullied the most by the rogue was also his closest friend, and we didn't want to upset him either. The last straw, or so I thought, was quite petty, but it didn't seem so in the moment. Rogue asked for a private session without anyone knowing, and he got it. I spotted it by chance, seeing people in the voice channel thinking they were just chatting or playing some game. Boy was I wrong. The rogue stole several boxes filled with gems and jewels that had been taken from the locals. The last session ended on us figuring out what to do with them, I think, so yeah, that was great stuff. I've messaged the other players telling them what's been going on. All of us were not happy with both the rogue and the dungeon master, but mostly rogue, because everyone felt pity for the DM. Like, I know it sounds strange, but we knew that their friendship was toxic, and the DM was outright psychologically harmed by the rogue. It's far more complicated than that, but we allowed a lot of things to slide on the DM side while resenting Rogue and often talking behind his back. I gotta say, there was no heroes in the story. We all contributed. What came of this endeavor? The Rogue got roughly around 40,000 in gold, while others barely had like a thousand between them, and the DM didn't want to retcon anything. Okay, so the Rogue has access to thousands, tens of thousands of gold pieces, extremely powerful magical items, and God knows what else. I mean, yeah, they had a private session. They earned all of those rewards with, without any of your involvement. This is going to completely ruin the balance of the game. I mean, seriously, our party dynamic has just been essentially destroyed. Like, are you not going to do anything about that? Look, it's too late now. There's nothing I can do about it. Walk back the changes! Walk back? You, you, you mean like a retcon? You would completely destroy the sanctity of our story. The continuity would never be the same. The group may as well break up right now. Be reasonable. Dude. Priorities. The rogue even bragged about the items he got, about how his hit points were higher than mine despite me being the tank. Funny ha 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 as I know. He also bought a magic ring, which he adored and always emphasized how he kissed it while using it in battle. One player suggested we steal the ring for a session or two. I can't say that was fair or helpful, but we thought it would at least be entertaining. It was, though the rogue was metagaming a lot through reading the DM's notes and personal texts. Yikes. So he immediately knew it was us, and he was fuming. We all break into a big argument, and he finally left. We've been asking the DM to kick him for a long time at this point, and it finally happens. Hooray, I'd say, if not for the fact that he'd return after like one or two blissful sessions. The DM's response? Uh, guys, you're being really passive without him. You need someone leading the way. We were having a break from battles, and we were enjoying ourselves in roleplay amongst each other, discussing personal stuff, dreams, loves, backstories. Honestly, it was a campaign highlight for me. He played with us for some time, but we ignored him hard unless there was no other option. Like when he killed a plot-relevant NPC that others were really attached to, even after the realization about them being a traitor, because we still respected them and wanted to at least pull some information out. He said he was going to kill them, we tried to stop him, defend the NPC, but we failed all our checks. He argued again for hours on after the session. He left again eventually. The Dungeon Master tried to make the moment feel sweet and impactful, describing the parting of this NPC, but none of us were happy. 
having it. We sighed in relief when he was gone, and that's that. For this campaign, at least, it continued smoothly and ended great. The rogue pressed the DM to start this campaign again just for him and his friends, and the DM obliged. Twice! None of them lasted longer than three sessions as far as I know. Shockingly, nobody wanted to play with the rogue, and unlike us, they had the guts to leave themselves. But this isn't the end of our story, as I had another game with him. As a DM from the previous campaign as a player, he played a really cool, lawful, evil cleric, and the rogue was still the rogue. The other DM was tougher, it wasn't having rogues BS, so he behaved most of the time. He bursted a few times, but I must admit, it was my fault. I was playing a nasty character and often targeted the rogue specifically. Others mostly ignored him, so he clinged to the cleric. Problem is, cleric had a lot of chemistry with my character, and we even had a romance at some point. It was not acceptable for rogue so we intervened in our roleplay from time to time and even asked the DM if he could bash in the door where me and Cleric were having a, um, a moment. Um. Oh, fighting to the death and then kissing that is. Oh, thank god, I almost had to clutch my pearls. The DM thankfully brushed him off. Later, there was a huge important moment for the campaign as a whole and for me personally. My character had secretly been developing the plans for summoning a demon, and she succeeded. She retired as a player character and became a boss later on, which was kind of cool. I was having a blast, role-playing my bum off. The cleric joined in and cast aside his god, pledging to the demon. Great stuff. Then, the rogue jumps in to kill my character. The PvP isn't the problem here. My character is clearly a threat, but man, the, the demon is right there. The demon just turned and killed the rogue in an instant. He rage quit, which he did frequently in both campaigns, by the way, and he refused to make a new character, demanding the Dungeon Master brings him back as an evil spirit or something. He said several times his goal would exclusively be to kill my character. And that would be it for him. Character death was a common thing in this campaign. We all agreed that in our circumstances, resurrection was not an option, so people rolled up new characters when they die. One player did this like three times and was okay with that, but the rogue clearly was not. He said his character was really important to him and didn't want to play anything else, which brings us to question, why would he agree to participate in a gruesome campaign in the first frickin' place? Because his friend was there and apparently he wasn't allowed to play without the rogue. The reason he wasn't kicked this time? The cleric. He was a great player and the dungeon master didn't want to lose him. He came in a package deal with the rogue, unfortunately. He even managed to make the DM resurrect him somehow. He had some restrictions, the specifics of which I was not aware of, but it didn't matter because he left the server after some argument about the furry NSFW art with the owner. I can excuse main character syndrome, murdering NPCs, bullying my friends, and being the worst. But I draw the line at not liking furry porn. You can excuse main character syndrome, murdering NPCs, bullying my friends, and being the worst. So, so that's that. The rogue Rogue became a legend, passed on to future generations of players in our Discord server. Or disc rod server. <laughs> I left a lot of things like clear main character syndrome, telling other people how to play, how to be a real man, snatching out the DM in the middle of a game to tell him how upset he was with us, but it seems so small in the grand scheme of things. It also turned out the toxicity and abuse in relationships with the dungeon master was somewhat mutual, but it doesn't really matter. I heard from a player that was bullied by Rogue relentlessly in the first campaign that they, as well as the DM, had broken free from him. Apparently he demanded the DM run like five games a week for him, and all of them fell apart. He didn't change his perspective, and now lost everyone willing to tolerate him. I have to thank Rogue for one thing, he made me value team play immensely. Also, kind of afraid of rogues, but I'll heal eventually. Oh boy, yeah, this, this was a lot. So yeah, Rogue here is not acting acceptably at all. Remember last week when we talked about the social web and getting trapped in it and how it's bad? Yeah, we see it here once again. Package deals are something that you gotta be careful with. Look, all of my players are best friends with me and with each other. We trust and care about each other, and that's why we make such a good group. However, sometimes when those friendships aren't shared, it can be a real big problem, and we see that here. Rogue is using his friendship with other players as a way to exploit people, which, yeah, toxic as hell. I really respect the self-awareness of the writer here because, yeah, mistakes were made. But at the end of the day, Rogue made these choices. It was Rogue that caused these events. Maybe they weren't handled the best, but make no mistake, in Rogue's effort to win the game, he lost all of his friends. And that's his choice. 
this was my first ever time playing a tabletop role-playing game, so everything that went into the creation of my character was discussed with the dungeon master as he was teaching me how to play and helping me bring my ideas to the table. The game was Starfinder, and I was playing a Lashunta, a race with limited telepathy. I was a technomancer with an AI installed that speaks to me. My character was a cultist who could hear the voice of her god and was struggling with some childhood trauma. Due to the multitude of voices speaking to her and the fact she was dealing with some unimportant to this retelling trauma, she was unhinged to say the least. I want to reiterate, this was all put together with the dungeon master, and I had full approval from him and the other party members before the campaign started. She also had some history with another player. For simplicity's sake, my character will be called Annie, and the other player's character will be called Luke. Now with everything set up, let's begin. The campaign had a bit of a rocky start already, with the DM introducing Annie and the inciting incident without telling me how much Annie did, or just what was going on in general, so I ended up annoying the whole table when trying to feel out how much I was actually involved. The DM eventually informed me that I knew nothing, and that I was just there because my god told me to be. Cool, the other thing that made things difficult is, Annie spoke cryptically, and 0% of the party ever tried to talk to her after the first 20 minutes in, even after changing how she spoke to be on the same level as a nursery rhyme to make it easier for the party. I understand that was, yeah, probably my mistake for wanting to make such a complex character, but being ignored every session stung, especially when no one bothered to tell me, and I had to fumble around to try and figure out a way to appease them. This is where Luke comes in. Annie and Luke have been childhood friends, and part of what led up to Annie's trauma was thinking that Luke had died. The plan was for Annie to eventually break free of the cult and her god, get a clear head, and start to heal with the help of Luke, because that is character growth, and it's fun, but... Nope! The dungeon master decided during our first dungeon dive that Annie would out of nowhere run away and fall unconscious? No role to fight it, no input from me, no prior warning. Annie was ripped from my control for the party to find her passed out at the entrance of the dungeon later. I was told that when Annie woke up, she was no longer hearing the voice of her god, and she was cured of her crazy. Just a snap of the dungeon master's fingers, and everything I was excited about vanished. Annie didn't get her growth, she didn't get to have her moment with Luke, and that was taken from Luke's player as well. Both of us were so lost as to what to do with our characters because them reconnecting and learning who the other was and how they had been important to each other, that was our goal and the DM knew that we were aiming for it. I didn't stay another session. I didn't love who Annie was anymore because she just become someone else. I found out later, and here comes the NSFW warning, that Annie left the party by returning to her cult to basically become a, a baby maker for everyone in the cult, so... <clears throat> Yeah, uh, TLDR, the dungeon master made my unhinged character sane without my input, and then sent her back to the cult she was meant to escape so she could make babies for everyone there. Fun times! Okay, yeah, I get that not everyone maybe wants to play out a super in-depth, trauma-filled plot like that at their table. And you know what? That's okay. But guess what? You also shouldn't approve those plot lines only to rip them away from the players without telling them first. Let's be generous and say that the DM or the party, whatever, they thought they could handle this plot line and they were wrong. It goes to the table and it's just not working out. Okay, well then you tell the players that. You tell them, hey, this isn't working out, can we change gears? You don't rip away control of their characters and then completely eradicate any semblance of story from their plot lines, because that's dumb. Of course, that's a generous read. Based on what this DM did with the character after the fact, I don't think this guy had a problem with including extremely traumatic content. I think he just wanted it in his very creepy terms. Man, this one had some weird ones, didn't it? But anyway, that is going to be it for today's episode of RPG Horror Stories. If you guys enjoyed, then please do leave a like. If you want to see more of our content, then you can check out our Shadow Over Kerkonos D&D actual play. It's linked in the cards. And while you're there, subscribe to Crispy's Tavern to get more of our content as it comes out. And finally, if you want to leave your own stories or thoughts, go down in the comments down below. If you can't think of a comment, leave the comment you're alive, dude, to let me know you made it to the end of the video. And hey, by the way, if you have your own horror stories, you can send them directly to us. There is an email down in the description down below. Send your stories our way for a chance to be featured in one of these videos. But hey, even if you don't have any stories, in essence, like, comment, subscribe. I'm going to go watch the new Castlevania show. Until next time, farewell. She got a text. <laughs> <laughs> it should be happy birthday. That was nice. It looks kind of weird with the black.